Hey, it's Jeremy here, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this cool visual effect in Adobe Photoshop. So a couple months back, my friend Dane from Melbourne created this post and had a really cool effect on the cover image. So you can see here on the cover image, there's like a vortex and it's sucking up the text and it looks real and cool. It looks like a you know, sci-fi movie. I thought it was really interesting. A lot of people really liked the cover design. So I thought, why not redesign it from scratch and show you how to do it? Now, this is the this redesign that I created using um, all my assets that I've gotten. And I'll show you in a minute what I've got. So I've got this iPhone 12 here, as you can see, this cool mock-up. So I'm going to use this to create um, that image. And then also I've got this Vortex image, which is really nice, futuristic shape. Um, you could, there's probably better shapes out there, but this is what I could find. And then also I'm just using a bit of texture there as well. So the site that I'm actually using to get all these assets is actually Envato Elements. And thanks to Envato for sponsoring this video. They're just super awesome and I use it on the daily. I do have a subscription with them, but you can see here, I've got this abstract futuristic shapes collection pack. And you can see here, it's got over 125 geometric shapes. So you can get a whole bunch of different shapes here. So if I go, go through here, um, plenty of different shapes here. A lot of cool like black holes and lines and grids a lot of cool stuff so i'm using this for the vortex effect i'm also downloaded this iphone 12 mock-up pack and they're really high quality just like super clear clear and crisp and i really like the design of that so this is um the iphone pack there that i've downloaded and then for textures you can actually just go down and if i want textures i can just go to graphics and type in um grunge ducks dust textures and you can see you get a whole bunch of different types of textures. So for example, if I click on this one here, I've got a whole bunch of different green ones, bit of cement grungy feel. So Envato is amazing, it's really great. And I will put a link in the description below. You can sign up. If you do sign up for the annual subscription, you'll get 50% off and then it'll end up being $16 a month. Super affordable, super cheap. And they've got a lot of cool assets. You've got 3D assets. You've got um, a whole bunch of really cool stuff. So for example, if I type in bike, I can add a bike in there if I want. Um, super cool stuff, really high quality, and I just love using them on the regular. So let's jump back into Photoshop. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag my iPhone into this plain document. It's a 1080 by 1080 pixel um, wide for Instagram size. I'm just gonna scale down my iPhone here. I'm gonna zoom in there, uh, really cool. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna get rid of the background and also the shadow. I don't need the shadow. You can see there's a little bit of a shadow. I can turn that off and I can just delete those layers altogether. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select the iPhone 12 layer, press Control T. And what I'm gonna do is actually rotate this phone like this. We want a bit of a dynamic angle, right? So I'm gonna add it like that and I'm gonna press Enter. Cool, looking super good. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to my layers panel and double click on the yellow layer, which is actually the smart object. And it's going to take me to inside the actual screen. So what I can do now is I've already got this layer here. I'm going to go into that uh, file and I'm going to drop that into there. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just scale this down, this vortex. And you know, I can play around with it. I'm just going to center it a bit better. You can also, you know, stretch it if you want or distort it. Um, but I try and get a nice feel there. Like that, I think that's really cool. And I'm gonna press enter. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on the layer itself. And I'm just going to go to the layer style and click color overlay. And I'm just gonna make it white. I can also drop the opacity as well, but I'm just gonna leave it at 100% and click okay. I'm gonna turn the background layer off. I'm gonna click on my bottom layer here and click solid color. And I'm gonna create just a nice um, deep blue black background. So I've got a background and I've got the vortex lines there. Now for me, the vortex lines are a bit thick for this specific one. That So what I'm gonna do is actually um, make it a bit thinner. So I'm gonna press control, click on the actual um, layer of the vortex to get the selection. I'll click the top left selection menu and I'm gonna go down to modify and I'm gonna go to contract. This is gonna make the, the actual selection contract a bit. I think three pixels or two pixels is pretty good. So I'm going to pr press OK. And you can see here now it's actually gone inside the middle there, which is really cool. Now, all I have to do is just uh, make sure that it's on the um, on the right layer. And then I can click Vector Mask, as you can see there. So it's actually made all the lines really thin, which I think is really cool. All right, I'm going to click Control S to save and go back to our file. 
and you can see this is what it's looking like right now, okay? We've got to tweak it a little bit just to make it a little bit nicer. So I'm going to go back to this file here. I'm going to make a new layer, and then I'm going to press B for the brush tool. Now I'm just going to hold Alt, left click, and sample the background color. I'm going to start to paint in the middle of this vortex, right? As you can see there. Now I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller using these bracket keys. And I'm going to press the number 5 to drop the opacity by 50%. And then what I like to do is I like to go sort of near the edges and just sort of make the bit uneven on the um, the shading there. So it looks a bit more natural. I'll also go on the edges as well. And I'm, I'm just left clicking, painting a little bit, using my mouse on the edges there. Just so it looks a bit more realistic. And, and, and it gives it depth. So it makes it feel like the, the vortex is long and wide and deep and scary. <laughs> but that's the vibe we want, okay? clicking, tapping a little bit, and I think that looks good. I'm going to press Control S to save, and then go back to the file here. And now we have so much more depth. Look at that. It looks so much more better. I'm digging it. Really cool. I'm going to quickly go back. I'm going to select my shape layer, double click on that, and then I'm going to actually add a, a glow. So I like to add a bit of an outer glow. This is going to just going to be white. I can make it, you know, maybe I want to make it yellow. I can do that to get a bit of a yellow tinge. Um, but typically I'll just leave it white or a, a little tiny bit like um, a tint of yellow. I can play with the opacity. I'll probably bring the opacity maybe around 60%. You can um, play with the spread a little bit if you'd like. I typically leave it low. You can also play with the size as well, which makes it a bit more wider. So I'll put the size maybe like 24 pixels and the spread 1%. So I'll press OK. Now if I turn that off and on, you can see it just adds a little bit of a subtle glow. So it adds a bit more depth. Press save and then I'll go back and you can see that adds a nice little effect there. Super cool. I think that is ready to go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going in this file, I'm going to add my solid color layer. Just another black layer using the same black as before. I'm going to bring that to the back there. And what I'm going to do is drop the text in. So I'm going to press T for the type tool. And I'm going to type enter the matrix i'm super excited for the new matrix movie i don't know if you if you're into it um but i've always been a fan of that and i just feel like the concept of this is like they're being sucked into another world to another dimension so i'm, I'm playing off that idea right so i can make the text big or i can make it really small it just depends on the scale that you want to go for all right and i'm going to place it somewhat like this Get a bit bigger. I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to press enter when I'm done. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to start to smudge this. I'm just going to duplicate the layer by pressing control J in case you make a mistake. And I'm just going to right click on my layer, click rasterize type. This is basically going to rasterize the layer so I can play around with the pixels. Alrighty. Now the secret tool that you want to be using is called the smudge tool. On the left hand side, you can see it's a little finger pointing with the smudge tool. If you don't have it, you click the three dots on the bottom, right click, and you can add um, the toolbar there. So I'm going to left click. Now the secret is you don't want to make the brush too big. You sort of want to make it a bit less than the width of your text, okay, or the, of the font. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the strength up to about 80% like that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click. And I'm going to follow through and start to click and drag. So I'm going to click, drag, and then I'm going to bring it into the vortex like this. So you can see it's smudging and bringing the, the letter and the whiteness of it and smudging it across. Like sort of how when you have charcoal and you smudge it on a page. Now, I'm basically going to duplicate that. I'm going to make the brush a bit smaller and just play around with it as I go. I can left click and drag again to sort of make it like heaps long like that. So I'm going with the flow of the vortex, as you can see. You can see I can smudge some of this other stuff as well to make sure like it's fading away, as you can see. Um, this E as well, I can smudge this a little bit. And one of the key things as well, if you just want to smudge things a little bit, you just want to drop this strength to about 30%. And you can see if I do the edges here, it, it just adds a bit of a nice effect. Nothing too major. As you can see there. So we're just adding a little bit of a subtle effect on some of the layers. And just click and drag into the direction of the vortex. 
So you're, you're creating that effect. And then I'm gonna bring the strength back up to 80%. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag. Make the brush a bit bigger, click and drag. So do this, oh, I like that. I think that was cool. Do the same to the X. And you can go over the same area as well, as many times as you want to get sort of a, a better effect. As you can see, just like that. And if you want to sort of edit the effect, you can press E for the eraser tool. And sometimes I like to sort of brush out some of the parts like, like this. I bring the opacity about 70%, 60%, and make sure the brush is a soft brush. And so what I can do is I can paint out some of the stuff to make it look like it's fading away or just like that. And if it's a bit too thick, I can sort of thin it out like this. As you can see there. So it's just about like trial and error and play around with it until you get like a nice effect. I think I'll click the smudge tool and add a bit of a smudge on this one here. So it looks really cool. It sort of blurs out the image, which I really like. Just a, just a nice effect. Especially if you sort of want that grungy texture effect as well. And we'll, we'll do a bit of this E like that as well. I think I'm gonna smudge this like that. And then, okay, that looks nice. So, so you, you, you sort of want those long strokes, as you can see, to make it go all the way in. So it looks a bit, it looks a bit better, like it's flowing. I want to try and look at, make it look organic as possible. And then I just rub out some of this stuff here. Alrighty. Cool. I think I'm pretty happy with it. Looking good, looking nice. Now I'm gonna start a bit of um, texture. So I found these cool grunge textures, as you can see. I'm loving it, really cool. And I'm just going to use the soft grain and I'm just gonna drag it. Oh, I'm gonna think. Yeah, I'm gonna drag this one into our image. You can see I can leave it on the text or I can drop it for the background. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change the blending mode. I'm just gonna go down and find the one I like. So let's see here. All right, so once you put it on divide, I think that works for me. So divide is gonna make it look white on the background, as you can see, without editing anything. Just put on that blending mode. Then what you can do is just drop the opacity like 50%. So then you've got sort of like this nice grungy texture in the back. And that's how you create this cool vortex effect. We can add some more glow and stuff like that, but I think this looks really cool. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed a bit of fun in Photoshop. And remember, check out Envato Elements. The link will be in the description below. Definitely a great resource if you're a graphic designer or someone who wants to do photo manipulation and a whole bunch of Photoshop stuff. So thanks for watching, really appreciate it. Do subscribe if you do enjoy this type of content and tutorials, because I post content every week. Really appreciate it, and I'll catch you in the next video.